To begin our reflection today, I would like us to answer this question. What would you do if it is a crime to practice Christianity? What would you do if it becomes a crime in Nigeria today to practice Christianity, to profess your faith in Christ, or to be seen with the Bible or with any religious item? How many of us will pray like Daniel if it becomes a crime against the state to pray to any other God other than the approved God of the land? How many of us will be bold enough to say, I am a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ, if it becomes a state law that no one should profess faith in Jesus Christ. I ask these questions because we have always had the privilege of freedom of religion, especially in this part of the country. I know that in some other parts of the country, Christians are persecuted on a steady basis. But in this area, we have not really you know, had to face, we have, we have not really faced, you know, re uh, persecution as much as the matters of Vietnam, whose feasts we celebrate today. Between the years, uh, between the 13th century, when the Portuguese missionaries first came to Vietnam, down through the, the time that the Dominicans came, and then the Jesuit missionaries came, even up to the 17th, 19th, and 20th century, thousands of persons were martyred for their faith. Among these includes priests, nuns, brothers, catechists, laymen and laywomen. Some of them were foreign missionaries, and some of them were locals who were killed by the government of the land and by their fellow countrymen for professing faith in Jesus Christ. The question is, if it so happens today that we are faced with this kind of persecution, how many of us will still believe? How many of us will still stand for God? It's a question that we need to ask, not that we are praying for persecution, but let us, you know, let us turn the table around. What if there is persecution already right now? Because from the look of things, our society has this God that we worship. And it is called money. It is called ego or kudi or whatever be the case, whatever be the name. The dollar, you know, the do, the bar. People... People's behavior, people's attitude, uh, people's even uh, way of thinking, it changes when it comes to money. And now, again, uh, we, we, we have a situation where even <laughs> people are ready to do anything because all in the name of hardship. So people do not, will, will, not, will not listen to God or to the Christian faith. I'm sure if, if, I, if I were to go out now, and hold 500,000 in one hand, and hold the Bible in the other hand, and ask someone to choose. Choose between the Bible and the money. I bet only very few persons will prefer the Bible to the money. They will say, ah, let me get the money first. Perhaps maybe I can get the Bible. I can use the money to buy the Bible. But we all know that many would rather prefer the money to the Bible. In other words, if they were also asked to choose between their life or their faith, <laughs> many would choose their life and deny Jesus Christ instantly. That is what we are facing today. Now, nobody is asking you to choose between your life and Jesus Christ, but rather 
from the way you live your life, the question is, do you prefer to follow what Jesus Christ is saying or you would rather uh, you know, bend, you know, bend the commandment of God, find your way. So even without facing persecution, most of us, by, by our way of life, we are, we, we, we are rejecting the light already. We, we are rejecting the light. When we, when we tell lies and say, God, you understand, you know, when we commit evil and partake in all forms of immorality, and say, ah, God, not to survive, not just to survive. So <laughs> already we are facing we are facing a kind of persecution. I would say a financial persecution or a moral persecution that is not is not a bloody persecution, but already our behavior is already showing that <laughs> we would we would rather stand against Christ than to stand for Christ. With this long introduction, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is the 24th day of November, 2023. It is Thursday of the 33rd week in ordinary time. And on this day, we remember St. Andrew Kim Tegon and his companions over a hundred of them, more than a hundred of them, that were recognized by Pope John Paul II in the year 1998. They are actually more than a thousand, but since their records were not kept, their names were not written down, we are not able to identify all. But in 1998, Pope John Paul II was able to identify over a hundred of them. As we remember them today, we pray that God Almighty will give us the courage and the zeal to stand for what is right, regardless of the pressure we face, regardless of the persecution that comes our way. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the first book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verses 36 to 37, verses 52 to 59. Our responsorial psalm comes from 1 Chronicles. While our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 19, verses 45 to 48. First reading. A reading from the first book of the Maccabees. In those days, Judas and his brothers said, Behold, our enemies are crushed. Let us go up to cleanse the sanctuary and dedicate it. So, all the army assembled, and they went up to Mount Zion early in the morning on the 25th day of the ninth month, which is the month of Chislev. In the 148th year, they rose and offered sacrifice as the Lord directs on the new altar of burnt offering which they had built. At the very season and on the very day that the Gentiles had profaned it, it was dedicated with songs and harps and lutes and cymbals. All the people fell on their faces and worshipped and blessed heaven, who had prospered them. So they celebrated the dedication of the altar for eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness. They offered a sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decorated the front of the temple with golden crowns and small shields. They restored the gates and the chambers of the priests and furnished them with doors. There was very great gladness among the people, and the reproach of the Gentiles was removed. Then Judas and his brothers and all the assembly of Israel determined that every year at that season, the days of the dedication of the altar should be observed with gladness and joy for eight days, beginning with the 25th day of the month of Chislev, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise your glorious name, O Lord. We praise your glorious name, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. 
We praise your glorious name, O Lord. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord. We praise your glorious name, O Lord. You are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you. We praise your glorious name, O Lord. You rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. We praise your glorious name, O Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them and they follow me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a then of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people sought to destroy him. But they did not find anything they could do, for all the people hung upon his words. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. In our first reading today, we read of how God granted Judah uh, victory over the enemies. I'll call them enemies now, but even it is against their own king, King Antiochus Epiphanes, who was trying to enforce the religion of the Gentiles upon the Israelites. And the moment they got victory, the first thing that Judah did was to go back, Judas, I mean, and his brothers. The first thing they did was to go back to dedicate the temple. And they removed all that was, you know, all the, 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 the profanity on the, on the temple. They removed all that. And for eight days, they celebrated the rededication of the temple. And all those idols and everything that they were put in there, they removed it, purified the whole place, cleansed the whole place, and they celebrated to the glory of God. They even made a, a, a law that every, every year they will be celebrating the dedication of the temple for eight days. And then when we come to our gospel passage, we find that the temple, by this time, the time of Jesus Christ, it had become a marketplace. It had become a place of buying and selling. And Jesus Christ could keep quiet no longer. Jesus Christ sought to do what Judas and his brothers did in our first reading. But this time around, cleansing the temple, throwing out the tables of the money changers and those who were buying and selling. There are so many lessons contained in today's readings. Number one, when we fight for morality, when we fight for truth, we fight for justice, it may be difficult, but let us be assured 
that since we are fighting for a good cause, God is with us. God will be with us. We need to be able, we, 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 we need to be fired up enough, angry at evil going on in our society for us to stand for what is right, for us to stand for truth, for us to stand for justice. It's not easy to fight, especially in a morally decadent society like ours. It's not easy to stand for truth, but don't worry, God will be with you. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. David will say that he, he was able to succeed because the Lord was his strength. God will be with you. God will fight for you. Don't shift your ground. Don't bow to pressure. Don't, don't let there be no excuse why you should turn against God's commandment. Oh, there's hunger in the land. There's poverty in the land. You know, there's economic hardship. Our leaders are looting. And the, the one that came to me, why can't I loot? After everybody is, everybody is a looter. Look at how much they are spending. Look at the, the latest rumor about Christmas gifts. Look at the millions. All these things do not justify us committing sin or having to kill a fellow human being just because of money. Don't worry. Fight for truth. Fight for what is right. And God will fight for you. And God will grant you victory. The second lesson we learned today, that as much as God grants us victory, we must also learn to give praise to God. We must acknowledge God. That is, that is what we see in Judas and his brothers returning to rededicate the temple, rededicate the house of God. You know, we cannot really thank God because everything in this world belongs to him. But one thing we can do for God is to make clean a certain area that has been dedicated to him. If you have a room in your house where you pray, the best thing you can do for God is to make sure that that room is always clean, neat and sparkling. And even if it's a corner, maybe a corner in your sitting room, and say, this is my prayer corner, don't allow that place to gather dust. It's not, it's not a sign of respect to God that your corner, your prayer corner, <laughs> becomes like a shrine because of so much dust and so much dirty. Sometimes you even forget that it's a prayer corner because you don't use it. And you put all kinds of things there. Everywhere belongs to God. But if you have set aside one place for God, if you say, this particular building, I give it to God, then show respect to that building. Because even though, even though God, God is not dwelling there, as in, as in, uh, that is not the only place where God can be found. God is everywhere, yes. But since you have left this one for God, honor it. If the church has been dedicated, say, this is the house of God. Yes, we know we can always reach God anywhere. But if we have given this place for God, then anytime we are in this particular place, let us worship God. Let us know that this place is not a place for business. This place is not a place of commerce. This is a place to bow down your head and give glory to God and worship God. And then also, the third lesson we learn, that in as much as we, 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 we fight for justice, we fight for truth, let us remember that the greatest enemy that we have is our own self. Our own self. You are your, your worst enemy. You are your great executioner. So the fight, the external fight against injustice, the fight against immorality, the fight against moral decadence, <laughs> we must also fight that fight within. When Jesus Christ was cleansing the temple, it was a reminder that the temple, as at that time, was only a reflection of the temple of their hearts. Just as they've driven God out of their hearts and made money their God, 
they also drove God out of his own house. That was why they could afford to buy and sell and carry out business inside the temple. You see, when our heart is full of evil, our actions will also be full of evil. But when we clean the heart, when the heart is clean, then our actions will also be clean. When the heart is clean, our actions will be clean. When you have respect and love for God, that corner that you have dedicated as your prayer corner, you will make sure it is clean. You will make sure you respect it as the place of God. If your heart is clean, if you have cleansed your house, you will not be in the church. And while mass is going on, pick up your phone to receive a call or you begin to browse and even watch Facebook and, you know, scroll on Instagram pictures while you are supposed to be in the house of God. Do you understand this? May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace of being fired up for truth, for righteousness, for justice. Just like Jesus Christ who cleansed the temple. Just like Judas and his brothers who fought against the evil king Antiochus Epiphanes until God granted them victory. Just like Mattathias and his seven sons who fought for truth and righteousness and prevented the decay of the Israelite customs, religion, and tradition. And also, remember, like that woman and her seven sons who stood and said, we would rather die yeah, than bow to what you're asking us to do. Or even like Eleazar, whom we read about a few days ago. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.